Zhengzhou City, the capital of Hunan province in central China, hit hard by a torrential rainfall in July. This is one of the low-lying waterlogged streets in Zhengzhou, central China's Hunan province. And the heavy rain is expected to hit the city from Sunday to Monday. Nearly eight inches of rain poured down within one hour. And in less than three days, the rate of rainfall reached 20 inches a year's worth. Officials in central China's Hunan province raised the death toll from devastating floods to 302, with 50 still missing. The deluge of killed over 300 people in the rare flood. It affected around 15 million people in Hunan province. Thousands of people are stranded in the suburbs of Zhengzhou. Many have been waiting for floods to subside since last night. We follow a rescue team into one of the worst affected areas, where up to 100 people have been stranded for 24 hours. Located in the heart of Zhengzhou City, Yuan Fang Group sent its CPC members to the front line for disaster relief. In just one day, governments in flood-stricken areas received 2 billion yuan, around 310 million U.S. dollars, donated by 45 private enterprises. What's the real role of party organizations in private enterprises? This week, B, Closer to China. Consider two realities in China today, one political, one economic. Politically, it is no state secret that under General Secretary Xi Jinping, the role of the Communist Party of China, the CPC, the party, has expanded across all aspects of Chinese society. Economically, private enterprises are an indispensable part of China's economic growth. As a role model for private firms, Sui Yong, once a laid-off worker, found the way of growth. It's easy for me to do party building. I do it so my company can develop, and I want to do it well for the better development of the company. So now I work non-stop with my team. As a labor-intensive company, we are going to change our business. We can help people by providing jobs to those who are older and less educated, whether they are migrant workers, or laid-off workers, or freelancers. We give them a job so they can get a salary to support their families. It's necessary to build party organizations and develop party members to unite people from all walks of life around the CPC. I think this is the purpose of party building in private enterprises. We explore the party's role in private enterprises. We talk to party theorists explaining why this all works. 
Because in the previous planned economy, the management of Chinese enterprises was based mainly on the party's leadership. So from this perspective, the leadership and management of the CPC has become a management wisdom and model in macro and micro levels of politics, economy and society. People all agree with this kind of management style, which is the leadership and wisdom, a management model with Chinese characteristics. These days, it can be said that in private enterprises of a certain scale, including foreign-funded enterprises, there are basically party organizations and party work. If there is a party organization in a company, it is easy for the party organization to form good communication with the government, which is also good for the operation of the company. First, you had allowing more foreign companies into the market, many of these other major American companies, European companies coming in, and also interaction on a political level led to more support for China in joining the World Trade Organization in 2001. Business owners are a wily lot. They seek diverse ways to build their companies and realize their dreams. And many see party branches as a special way to develop new business opportunities by leveraging party relationships. In April 2002, Shue called for all CPC members in the company to organize a party committee. We started a small cleaning service company. We could only offer low wages, and our reputation wasn't good. Then a senior CPC member in our company told me, why don't we set up a party organization? If we retain the party members, we will retain the management staff, and you can only retain party members by creating a party organization. The CPC made a rule that private business owners should not join the party. But as we entered the new century, the leaders of the Chinese Communist Party realized that the rules needed to be reconsidered. In the same year that Shui's company began its party committee, over 27 percent of private enterprises in China founded party organizations, initially to conform to Chinese conditions and thus to seek more growth opportunities, as did Yuan Fang Group. At the beginning of the new century, Jiang Zemin generally was to re-examine this issue. I was involved in researching this issue that year under the auspices of our university leaders. Members of the new social class, including business owners in the private sector, have only emerged since the reform and opening up, and their number is increasing. When we went to Wenzhou, Taizhou, and Shaoshan in Zhejiang province for corporate research, it was clear that all the private business owners there supported the reform and opening up, because without the reform and opening up policy made by the CPC, they would never have become who they are today. So, politically speaking, they approved of the reform and opening up and also held the CPC in high esteem. So far, around 2 million non-public enterprises and over 300,000 social organizations in China have established party committees or branches, accounting for, respectively, 70 percent and 60 percent of the whole sectors. The Communist Party is everywhere in China. The Communist Party is now invading China's boardrooms. The party's elevated role in private firms has triggered differing opinions with strong critique in Western media. The issue is not black and white. There are a large number of private owners, foreign or joint ventures, flourishing in China. And understanding how they found favor in the party-led system offers a roadmap to success in the world's second largest economy. We set up a party organization out of our own volition. We needed the party and needed to get closer to the party. Only by doing so could we change the destiny of our private business. In a country that long had a love affair with tea, Starbucks opens a new coffee shop in China every 12 hours. Managers of some foreign companies understand these principles. Such managers see the truth and don't doubt or reject it. In fact, they even welcome and support the Chinese Communist Party to recruit party members to carry out work in the company. 
At that time, we really didn't know what kind of changes the party organization would bring to the company. There was one event that changed us completely. When the office building of the CPC Henan Provincial Committee was completed in June, it put out a call to hire a property management service. Then I thought that the CPC Henan Provincial Committee must have political standards that require the bidding companies be politically reliable. I took two party members with me to submit the bid and promised the jury that if I won the bid, we would send our best party members to provide property management service for the building, in addition to standardized management and training. Three days later, to our surprise, we received the bid winning notice. It was unexpected because at that time we knew we were small business. After the CPC Henan Provincial Committee issued the bid winning notice, I said to everyone, party building equates to productivity. For the first time, Shui says she realized that CPC members among her employees could bring the company a good reputation and thus more profits. I asked the secretary to take charge of every bidding process and assigned two party members to assist him. Each time we went for a bidding event, we brought a small sign saying, I am a CPC member, so that people could see from afar that our company had party members. At that time, since we mainly provided property management services for the logistics department of government agencies, our success rate in bidding rose exponentially, which really made our company competitors envious. At that time, I was a bit narrow-minded, and I was afraid that other companies would compete with me if they set up party organizations. Now things are different. We have an incubation base for party building in private sectors. For anyone who wants to set up a party organization, I'm happy to tell them how to do it. At present, more than 200,000 people come here to visit and study. They come from all over the country. Sometimes more than 1,000 people come here in a day. 90% of them come for a short period of time or just for a brief visit, and they leave after two or three hours. Some will set aside more time for in-depth study and communication. We don't charge any fees of this for this kind of visit. It's all considered public service. The goal of companies is to create profits and value, but we have invested energy, manpower, material and financial resources into building these party building platforms. Given the low margin of our business, why should we do such a thing that creates no direct income? It's because we feel that party building has actually brought a lot of intangible value and has also improved our reputation. I went to Yuanfang Group to learn about party building in private sectors. During my visit, she gave me a brief introduction, and the whole process made me very excited. The development of private enterprises is not easy. In the process of establishing the party organization, she drew wisdom from the behavior of the party organization and applied it to running a small company made up of laid-off female cleaners who had no business management experience. In the end, it grew into a large company. She had tapped into the wisdom of the CPC in leading and organizing people. In that process, she was exploring the wisdom embedded in party building work under the guidance of the CPC and applying it into enterprises management. She managed to combine the two organically. The CPC's party building in private enterprises expresses a unique party enterprise culture as China sees its modern governance model. Do you agree with George Soros that doing business in China is no longer morally justifiable because it's tantamount to supporting a totalitarian regime? No. And the reason I don't agree is not that I have some, is that I'm a business person and the amount of business people that are getting involved in these issues because they think there's only one side of an issue. 
Look, the reason things are issues is because there's two sides to it. In, in my world, uh, you know, I try to look at business as business, um, and I think there's way too much pressure or way too much uh, focus on, on business trying to get involved in issues. Let me tell you, most of these issues are 55-45 or 60-40, and there's a lot of people who think there's clarity on what side you should be on, and I, I think it's very dangerous. Las empresas privadas chinas deben someterse a inspecciones estatales y tienen comités del Partido Comunista dentro que pueden influenciar la toma de decisiones. Some foreign media criticize CPC party committees in commercial enterprises because they control business operations and interfere with business decisions. Is that true? Many entrepreneurs are now facing the issue of handing over their companies to the next generation. Our company completed the handover process in 2014. My son took up the baton and became the general manager responsible for corporate operations. Party building earned us a good reputation, but it didn't really matter when dealing with certain customers. People don't choose you just because you have a party committee. Many private business owners find that party members in their companies are often excellent employees who are not only proficient but also virtuous. So it's good for the business development with more such workers. By June 2021, more than 95 million CPC party members in China. So that's observing an increase of 3.5 percent increase in comparison uh, to 2019. Nowadays, members of the Communist Party of China are distributed across all sectors of society, which means that there are many people who share the same values, ideals and visions as we do. So, when everyone realizes that we need to build such a consensus or that we need to use something to lead us to better development, then I believe that more and more people will support our company. This is the process of consensus development. It is also my greatest pride that my son has been a part of this traditional service business I was in. He has kept the business growing by 30% with new ideas, innovation, big data, and new business models. Any cooperation we have with anyone must be based on the fact that both sides share a similar ideology and can communicate easily. Party building plays more of a role in this regard. The underlying concept is the same for everyone, be it the business or the customer. So, of course, it will contribute to business development. <laughs> Shui Rong, founder of Yuan Fang Group, is well known in business circles as an internet influencer and the red preacher. Now I'm working as the president of five associations and also working as the leader of a business association. I see so many young people starting their own businesses. They may face a lot of bumps on the road and even have to pay a heavy price and take a lot of detours. With over 30 years of entrepreneurship, what I can do is to share some of my successful experience with the young entrepreneurs. The reality is that there are still some entrepreneurs who are not aware of what is good about the party building and how it should be done. But it doesn't matter. The CPC has never said that it's compulsory to set up a party organization within a company. I just want to tell you that it's, it is really good. If you don't use it, others will.
If you don't build it, others will. For those who build it, the party organization can serve as a role model and a driving force for cooperative development. It is my mission and duty to give lectures about the party history. As one of the 100 outstanding party workers in China, this is a responsibility I cannot shirk. I will try my best to do it and give 100%. Many of her employees are cleaning women doing hard and tiring jobs. So it's really crucial to bring everyone together. She learns from the framework set by the party and translates it into productivity in a serious way. There's a popular slogan in the private sector. Party building work can lead to greater productivity when it's all done well. This is the rule of thumb when she derived from practice. Looking macroscopically, the party company system is integral to what China calls its modern enterprise management system, which seeks to learn best practices from developed market economies and adapt and normalize them for China's socialist market economy with Chinese characteristics. From the party itself, we have been referring to the rules and principles identified by the CPC. We are trying to utilize the greatest advantages we have, the CPC's leadership and the socialist system, and bring them into full play. The business operation has been handed over to the younger generation. I take up the responsibility for party building and the party banner high. So, it's a wonderful change of role on my part. My ancestral hometown is Xuzhou, Jiangsu province. My father joined the Communist Revolution in 1938 at the age of 15. He's a veteran who fought in the resistance war against Japan and also the civil war. My father participated in the Yangtze River crossing campaign, and then he built roads into Tibet and fought bandits along the way. I was born in a snowy plateau of Tibet. Because I grew up in such a revolutionary family, the love of the CPC is in my blood. From a young age, we saw our father's wholehearted efforts for the country and the party. Those soldiers taught us by example, and their actions deeply influenced us. Not yet having completely recovered from record-breaking torrential downpours last week, Zhengzhou is facing the challenge of a COVID-19 outbreak. Unlike many countries in Europe and the Americas, China's geography is characterized by high-altitude plateaus in the west and low-lying plains in the east. The west is dotted with high mountains, while the east is adjacent to the ocean, with several large rivers running through the land. Serious natural disasters, especially floods, occur almost every year. Those who have experienced floods know that helpless individuals are like grains of sand in the face of floods and can easily be washed away without a trace. This is why, even since ancient times, China has attached great importance to water management through collective efforts. People in my company take the initiative to take responsibilities and make contributions anonymously. This is a habit that has been formed over many years. They rush to the front when there's a big challenge and when there's danger. When our country is in trouble, our slogan is, I am a CPC member, so let me do it.
不去牺牲，他们叫长发桶，表示这两个血气方刚、意气风发的年轻。这个时候，老板的命令啊、金钱呢、啊，真的很苍白。在这危机时候，能豁出来、能站出来的是共产党员和入党阶级分子。When the country is in trouble, all our party members put their lives on the line and take actions. This is what private enterprise in China is all about, and this is what the CPC members are all about. Whether in the private or public sector, when the country is in trouble, we all rush to the front and are not afraid to give our lives. 一百年来，中国共产党团结带领中国人民进行的一切奋斗。一切牺牲，一切创造，归结起来，就是一个主题：实现中华民族伟大复兴。